Hey there, Erevin here again to bring you a breakdown of the recently buffed Jar 5 Dominator, which was a common request from you guys in the comments of my previous coverage of the Diligence Counter Sniper. The Dominator has certainly been taking over the public opinion of Helldivers 2 ever since this buff went live, but how good is it now? Let's take a deep dive into its technical aspects and talk about it. As is the case with all of my content, all testing as well as my thoughts and opinions are going to be derived from Difficulty 9 testing, as it's the only difficulty I play on. The Jar 5 Dominator is a gyrojet style firearm, meaning the bullets leave the barrel of the weapon, then speed up dramatically afterwards. If you are wondering why the weapon feels like it has an odd hit detection, or your shots seem to lag behind your trigger pulls, you now know why that is. This can be difficult to get used to, especially when fighting at longer ranges when attempting to land precise shots on heads, as this dynamic can cause you to miss your intended target very easily if you aren't pacing yourself properly, depending on how quick the target is. The weapon also has some pretty sizable recoil, but nothing a bit of management can't handle if you're pacing yourself with your shots, as well as nothing so dramatic that you can't perform some decent groupings whenever you mag dump at close range. The optic is a simple clean red dot, which is just fine, as long range precision, while possible, is not really the weapon's strong suit, shining much brighter at medium ranges. At that medium range, however, if attempting to get the drop on your enemies or go unnoticed when firing the jar, it is unable to do so as the subtle approach is not open to it due to its loud sound profile, still receiving an instant hostile reaction from guards even as far as 50 meters away, meaning this one is definitely for those of you with a more hands-on approach to your hell dives. The Dominator is also in the 15 round magazine club, similar to the Counter Sniper and Scorcher, which is the trend among the DMRs of Helldivers 2 at the moment. While that may seem to be a very underwhelming capacity, thanks to its new raw power of 300 damage, buffed by an incredible 50% from its original 200, the breakpoints, TTK, and general damage of this weapon is just absurd, meaning those 15 shots very regularly result in many kills, making its low mag and ammo capacity widely a non-issue. The weapon's penetrative force is also interesting, as it has a tendency against lightly armored or unarmored targets to just pierce right through and through into enemies behind them making this weapon surprisingly decent for horde clear as a result in a way you really wouldn't expect its mag size to dictate. The Dominator's swivel speed is slightly slow, but nothing unmanageable by any means, leaving the ergonomics overall only slightly uncomfortable in my opinion. The Jar 5 also features some very jarring stagger for those impacted by it, leaving them helpless as it tears them to pieces. As a final note on this technical breakdown, the reload animation when empty does constitute pulling the charging handle of the gun to chamber around. This does add a significant amount of time to its otherwise relatively short reload time, so if in the middle of a firefight, it's not a bad idea to be reloading a little bit early to stay effective, circumventing this additional animation time. Now that we've talked about all the weapon's technical aspects, let's get to the meat of the breakdown and talk about all the important damage breakpoints and target effectiveness of the Dominator, starting with the automatons. The Dominator rocks a high medium armor penetration, likely around class 6 as far as the 1 to 10 scale is concerned, close to the Senator for reference, as it deals gray hits to the plate between the Strider's legs in the same fashion, while dealing red hits to the joints. In either case, the Dominator makes very short work of Striders in this fashion, taking them out in just 2 to 3 shots on average, leaving no need for a weapon swap when faced with them. To absolutely no one's surprise, the 300 base damage of the weapon sends every light bot straight to the scrap heap in just one shot to literally anywhere on their body, no further questions asked. The recoil and target acquisition of the weapon is the only time between their rapid deconstruction. Berserkers are taken out in as little as three shots to their pelvis, which registers as red hits, otherwise known as overpenetration damage. The stagger also leaves these chainsaw wielding monstrosities utterly neutralized during the process. Devastators, both Heavy and Rocket, are easily dealt with as well, being taken out in just a singular precise headshot. Although the Dominator in your situation does not always allow such precision, this is no problem at all as Devastators will crumble within 5 shots to their chest region regardless, as well as be staggered during the entire process. The new enemy gunships are a formidable opponent for the Dominator deflecting all shots made on their hull, but letting Grey hits through for half damage on their thrusters. The high mobility of the gunships and the gyrojet nature of the Dominator makes these a difficult opponent for it, making it very difficult to land those shots, but not impossible. Being brought down generally within about a magazine, 
Likely best to swap to a support weapon though, as these targets are pretty tricky. The cannon turrets and tanks deflect all shots from the Dominator outside those landed on its heatsink, which takes grey hits for half damage. These are both able to be brought down within a magazine as well, although it can be difficult to keep a consistent stream of shots on them before they have the chance to turn on you. The Scorcher does notably handle these two targets, in particular a little bit better due to how its explosions can permeate through that armor into the heat sinks, but that does not by any means take away from the dominance of the Dominator over the rest of its targets. The Hulks deflect all shots outside of the ones against its heat sink. However, shots on its heat sink from the Dominator register as red hits and stagger them, making this a very easy target once you get behind them, usually taking only around half the magazine. Some insane raw firepower indeed. This is going to bring us to the Terminids. The Hunters are put in their place with just one shot to the body, putting these murderous grasshoppers to bed. And also, as to no one's surprise, the Scavengers and their mutant cousins follow suit being eradicated in just one bullet to literally anywhere. Stalkers are eliminated in just a single headshot, and typically just three body shots otherwise, staggered the entire time, turning them into helpless victims for the Dominator. These guys have no chance. Hive Guards take red hits to the lower face region, resulting in two-shot kills, or generally three-shot kills when firing into the proper plate on their fronts. They also go down in just two shots to their sides, making them also a very easy target. Brood Commanders are brought down in just three shots, or two shots if you consider that you can pop off their heads and just let them bleed out afterwards. So basically, this enemy is also just reduced to cannon fodder. Bile Spewers are brought down in just two shots to the head, as well as just as easily through their backs due to the weapon's explosive property. Not even these mobile mortars stand any chance against it, as these are also unable to spit at you due to the stagger lock being inflicted during their extermination. The Charger is not a particularly favorable for the Devastator, as you would expect, although it is feasible. The rear of the Charger can be destroyed in just 13 shots, leaving it to bleed out although the accuracy required to do so can prove difficult if not utilizing EMS or stuns. The back of the charger's legs can also be penetrated and taken out, but again, unlikely convenient kill methods, I would probably still always swap weapons for these. Bile Titan Underbelly Sacks hilariously can be destroyed in just three shots from the Dominator, however, this does not kill it anytime soon, as the bleed out is extremely long and there is no other areas on the Titan this weapon is effective against. Destroying the sack also removes the Titan's ability to spit, which can be an active detriment, as it makes it much more difficult to create space when it's unable to spit at you, as it will continually just continue trying to melee and speed up. Still gonna want to pull out the support weapon and stratagems for these guys. That does it for our breakpoint breakdown. So how good is the Jar 5 Dominator in my opinion? Well, to put it bluntly, and I don't say this unless I truly do believe it, it's overpowered. The Jar 5 exhibits a dominance over both factions unmatched by any other weapon. There are several primaries that shine brightly in just one of the two factions, but this weapon just dismantles both relatively easily. Its handling, gyrojet nature, and mag size are its only drawbacks in exchange for an absolutely absurd amount of raw power not found in any other primary. The Plaz Scorcher and Diligence may be more useful for those with a more subtle approach to their missions due to the ability to sneak up on enemies with them, but the Dominator absolutely dominates when you want to go loud and proud in your hell dives. Thank you for watching till the end, and have a wonderful day. See ya! And now, another helpful tip from General Brash. Thanks to Aravin, we now have a better understanding of just how incredibly awesome R&D has made our Dominator. For his diligent work, I am ordering all active hell divers to like, comment, and subscribe to his channel. Failure to comply with this new major order will result in a 50% increase to your stratagem cooldowns. Brash tactics. Use them or die trying. <laughs>